What's going on there, YouTube, and welcome back to another comic book video. We are going to continue our coverage over the Poison Ivy 2022 series. And the reason why we are going to continue our coverage over this series is because I want to have everything done for her before we jump into the actual Donna DC point for the character. Remember that when it comes to Donna DC, it is a fresh star for DC Comics as a way to bring in new readers, but also to bring back some old readers as well. Now, some characters were brought into the Donna DC by relaunching their titles with new number one books, except some characters weren't, like Poison Ivy. Her Donna DC begins in issue number 13 of this current series, but we have to play a tad bit of catch up so that we are able to learn what is really happening for the character before we are able to jump into the Donna DC point for the character. Now, a quick rundown for the character before this book, there was a point that she was split into two, two different kinds of people, one good, one bad. But unfortunately, she was put back together with limits to her powers. Well, really, she began to lose her powers, and so she had to confront the man who had turned her into Poison Ivy, Jason Woodrew, who also turns himself into a plant-like person who is connected to the green. Ivy killed him in our last storyline, absorbed him, and now she is on a mission to help save the Earth, but also without trying to kill off the human race. She will kill bad people, but it is to help with her big mission. Now, today's video, we're going to cover Poison Ivy number 7 and number 8, a two-part storyline. Now, with that being said, though, in the opening pages of today's video, we actually do pick up with Poison Ivy talking to us while you do have us following around some particular person who is going to be the bad guy of this storyline, but we follow them around their mansion. Now, as we follow them around their mansion, you do have Poison Ivy kind of tell us something very important, and which is how bad guys are beginning to change. Now, what she means by that is, usually you're able to pick up when someone is a bad guy because of how they look, but now you can no longer do that. That bad guys have changed now so much that you can no longer just look at a person and say, oh yeah, that's a bad guy right there. You actually have to sit down and listen to the bad guy talk to figure out what they stand for. And even then sometimes, the way bad guys think and the way they talk, they can also trick you into believing that they are actually good guys. But in reality, they are bad guys. And so this is Poison Ivy saying, the bad guy of this storyline right here, she may seem like a good person, she may act like a good person, and may talk like a good person, but in reality, she's not a good person at all. And so this is how Poison Ivy is going to bring down her new bad guy. But we kind of find out that she got a new job. And that job is in landscaping for this particular person's mansion, along with a crew of people who are also hired to do some landscaping as well. And so then we have to jump back in time. Now, when we do jump back in time, we actually only jump to the earlier part of that day, meaning that we're going to learn why she got that job in landscaping at that person's mansion. But either way, we actually do pick up with Poison Ivy right now, arriving in Parson, Montana. Now, when she does arrive in Parson, Montana, we come to find out that she wants to bring down a certain kind of company. Now, of course, this company's name is Future Gas. Now, when it comes to Future Gas, they're doing something really harmful to plants, which means that Poison Ivy wants to go ahead and bring down his company completely. Now, she also heard that it could be some kind of connection between this company and also Jason Woodrew as well. And remember, when it comes to Jason Woodrew, he was the person that had actually turned her into Poison Ivy. Either way, when she does arrive into Parson, Montana, she does pull over because she does see something going on right now in the middle of the city. 
And so when she does pull over, she does see what's happening right now in the city of Parson. And really she sees what's happening to their crops. Because right now when she goes to a certain kind of crop field, when she does get in the middle of that crop field, she realized that this company Future Gas is pumping something into the ground. Now at first she felt like, okay, this area is just being polluted. But then she realized that it's also being terraformed. Now while she's trying to figure out what in the world Future Gas is right now pumping into the ground, into these crops, that is the moment she is attacked by a plant like Monster. Now this is actually very important. And the reason why, because she saw these monsters in our last video. And originally she thought the monsters that had attacked her were being controlled by Jason Woodrew. But then she comes to find out that that honestly couldn't be true because by this point, Jason Woodrew is actually dead. And so how in the world are there creatures way out here who are now trying to kill her? And so she believes that whatever is being pumped into the ground right now is just not polluting the ground and hurting the crops, it could also be affecting the people as well because the people in this city could be eating these crops or the employees of this company is also being affected by whatever is being pumped into the ground. But either way, you do have Poison Ivy use her powers as a way to go ahead and defeat this creature. Now when she does defeat the creature, she does realize that the same spores that kind of give her her powers and gives her the ability to have a connection to the green was also in that plant-like creature. But again though, is the creature somebody who was turned into that plant-like creature or are plant life actually turning into some kind of creature? She has no idea. But then that is the moment you do have Ivy be confronted by some people from Parson City. Now, when they do arrive to talk to her, they do tell her, hey, listen, um, we heard some noises and we're trying to make sure that you're okay because we have been seeing a lot of creatures in our area for the last couple weeks maybe months. Now with that being said, that tells Ivy that ever since Future Gas had arrived in this area and began to pump their new kind of toxin into the ground, more and more creatures kept popping up in this city left and right. But the people of this city are not doing anything at all. Now you would think they would because now you're talking about the idea of creatures just popping up left and right and causing havoc to your city. But they don't want to do anything at all. And the reason why, because ever since Future Gas had arrived, they got jobs here. Medical insurance. And the list goes on. Things that most other towns in America already have, except this small area. And so even though their crops are being poisoned, their food is being poisoned, they are being poisoned as well because they eat the crops in the food. They don't care because now they have jobs. Now they have medical insurance. They have everything else they need to survive thanks to future gas being part of this city. Either way though, it's Ivy saying that's still not okay. I have to take down this company now. And luckily the CEO lives in this area. And of course that CEO was that random person that we were following earlier. The one that lived in that mansion. The one that you had Ivy landscaping for. And so that tells us how in the world she got into landscaping at that mansion. And so getting back into the present day, we actually do pick up with Ivy right now going inside the mansion. Now, what she's doing right now is that she is pretending that she wants to deliver some flowers to her new boss to show her new boss some amazing flowers that she had found. Now, we kind of find out that her new boss name is Patrice Crawley. Now, with that being said, Patrice Crawley is going to be the main bad guy of this storyline. But either way, she's kind of faking a delivery as a way to get in the office of Patrice to hopefully find something that could tell her more information of what Future Gas is trying to do or what is Patrice trying to do. And so while she's looking around the office while Patrice is out, well, that is the moment you have Patrice 
walk back in and catch Ivy in her office. Now at first, it really does seem like to Ivy that when it comes to Patrice, she's kind of acting in a way where Ivy is just one of her employees who has snuck into her office. But then Ivy realized something, the way Patrice is actually talking, where it seems like Patrice actually knows something about Ivy, like Ivy's true secret identity. Because at first, you do have Patrice say like, you know, it's very interesting to me how one of my employees just came into my office to look around. I mean, you came to my office to give me flowers, but I caught you looking around. But then I realized something, that you did not come to my office to just look around. Matter of fact, you came into my office to find some clues, to possibly sabotage me. Now, that is the moment you have Ivy think, okay, she thinks I work for a different company. I snuck into her workforce as a way to sabotage her company. But then you have Patrice say, no, I know you don't work for anybody else. I know you were not hired to actually help me. I know that you are Poison Ivy, and I know who you are because you forgot about me, but honey, I did not forget about you because we come to find out that she was actually an assistant to Jason Woodrow back when Ivy was in college in his class. And of course, she also loved Jason Woodrow as well, just as much as Ivy did way back then. And so she tells Ivy, yeah, listen, I thought of the world of Jason Woodrow. I would do anything for him. Now, it does seem like she does know that Jason Woodrow is no longer around. But either way, as soon as she told Ivy that she was working with Jason Woodrow, you had Ivy try to use her powers on Patrice. But then you have Patrice say, oh, no, no, no. I hold on to a special kind of gas that technically cancels out your powers, meaning that the plants you brought around you right now to use against me, because your powers have been turned off, those plants are now going to eat you up, going to kill you all slowly. And so it's her saying, I have technically won, and I'm going to leave you here in my office to die, and then I'll come back and remove your body later on. Now, at first, it may seem like, okay, this is going to be the end for Ivy. Like, she is literally going to die here. But then that is the moment, luckily for Ivy, somebody does walk into the office. Now, when they do walk into the office, of course, they do get freaked out. But this character right here is going to play a minor role later on in later books when it comes to Poison Ivy. But either way, this character realized, oh my gosh, there's someone trapped inside plants right now and most likely they are dying. Now, when we get into the eighth issue of this series, we actually do pick up with the person who had found Poison Ivy in the office of Patrice. Now, we kind of find out the person who found her, her name is Janet. And matter of fact, Janet and Poison Ivy met in a different book way before this one came out. Not way before, but it did come out a couple months or possibly a year or two before this one did. Either way, Ivy and Janet met back in Gotham, where of course Ivy was taking down some kind of chemical plant. And when she did that, of course, Janet worked there and she worked in the HR department. Now, she was caught in the fire that Ivy actually did start, but Ivy did not want to see innocent people die. And so Ivy did pull out of the fire and say, hey, I'm saving your life because you are an innocent person. You do not deserve to die. Now, this is them right now meeting up again. But of course, for Janet, she's kind of like, wait a second. You're the same person who caused me to lose my last job, and you were in Gotham. We are now across the country here in Montana, and here you go again, costing me my other job now? Like, come on, man. Why are you always causing me to lose jobs? I cannot afford to lose this job. Now, you do have Ivy tell Janet, hey, listen, the person you're working for is actually a bad guy. 
Now, once Janet hears that, she realizes, okay, Ivy is telling the truth. If my boss, my new boss, is a bad guy, maybe I should possibly help out Ivy. The problem is, though, how in the world can Janet help out Ivy, who's right now trapped inside some plants? And so you have Ivy say, listen, there must be some kind of lab nearby. And in that lab, there must be some kind of antidote that could actually help me break free from these plants. And so you do have Janet agree to help Ivy find that antidote to help free her. And so you do have Ivy realize that she can't just let Janet walk around the mansion by herself just in case Patrice comes back and tries to kill her. And so even though earlier we saw that Ivy powers were technically canceled, apparently she still has control over some plants in the area. And so she does send a small flower to follow behind Janet, but a way to communicate as well, but to also protect Janet just in case Patrice comes back. Now with that being said though, while you have the two ladies looking for the laboratory, you do have Janet mention why she came to Montana. Why did she leave Gotham? Yes, she did lose her job, but there are other jobs in Gotham. But the reason why she lost her job or why she moved to Montana, sorry, is because she met a guy online. Now, of course, she met a guy online. She moved across the country to be with that guy. And matter of fact, everything was going great until she found out that she has a tumor. And so when she found out, the guy that she moved across the country for dipped out. He did not want to be with somebody who could most likely die. Now, the doctors did tell her, we can help you out. We can get rid of that tumor, but it does cost a lot of money. But that guy still left her behind. And so that's why she really does not want to lose this job right here because she needs the money to pay for the surgery to remove that tumor. And as soon as Ivy hears that story, she feels really bad. But at the same time, it's Ivy saying, but I have to kind of get rid of your boss because your boss is an evil genius. Now, you do have Janet tell Ivy, listen, if I help you, you may not kill the boss. You are not going to kill anybody at all because I'm helping you. And if you kill them, that basically pulls me into your mess even more. I do not want to be part of your mess at all. So no killing while I'm helping you out right now. And so you do have the two ladies actually being able to find the laboratory. But here comes the big problem though, because as soon as they find the laboratory, well, that is the moment you have Janet on accident touch something in the laboratory, which of course does set off the alarms. And with the alarms going off, that does tell Patrice, someone found my lab and someone is trying to take something out of my lab. And so that means the ladies have to hurry up and get what they came for. The problem is though, as soon as they find the antidote, well, that is the moment you have Patrice appears, which means that now Janet must fight against Patrice or Ivy must use a small flower that she sent along with Janet to protect her from Patrice. And really, you don't have that flower come into play because what actually happens is that you have Janet run back to where Ivy is at. And as soon as she does get back to Ivy and gives Ivy the antidote from the laboratory of Patrice, well, that means Ivy is now once again free from those plants, but on top of that, she also has some of her powers back as well, which means that now she can control some of the plants in the area. And so with her powers coming back, you have Patrice realize, okay, I messed up, let me get out of here. Now, if you are a smart person, you should get far away from Ivy, but also any plants near Ivy, except Patrice runs into the crop field, where of course, that's still plants for Ivy to control. But either way, Ivy was able to catch up to Patrice easily. And when she does catch up to Patrice, that is the moment we see that when it comes to Patrice, she really did love Jason Woodrow. And she was trying to take his vision and spread it across the world because she really did believe in what he was trying to do. Now, when it came to Jason Woodrow, even though he had the powers to control plants and could change the world with that power, instead, what he wanted 
wanted to do is make money off of it. And so right now we see that with Patrice, she's just like Jason because she tells Ivy once she realized what her toxin was actually doing to this area, she pushed even harder to hopefully get more from her new toxin. And so, of course, to make more money. Now, with all that being said, you have Ivy really, really upset with the idea of what Patrice is actually telling her. But then Ivy remembers that she did promise Janet that she will not kill La Patrice or kill anybody on this mission at all. And so what she does instead is she traps Patrice inside a plant for life. And what Ivy tells us that she may outlive everybody on the planet which is kind of crazy that you're trapped in there for, well, ever. Now, the way the story does wrap up is where you actually have Janet and also Ivy becoming close friends. And what I mean by that is you do have Ivy and Janet kind of talk after Ivy took care of Patrice. And after that, you have Ivy kind of tell Janet that she's going to help her out. Because remember, when it comes to Janet, she needs money for her surgery because she has a tumor. And so you have Ivy say, hey, listen. I know some doctors because they owe me favors, and these doctors could most likely help take care of your surgery. Now, this is actually illegal, but either way, you do have Ivy say, let's go to my friends, and they can help you out with your surgery. And so, the last couple pages, we do see Ivy kind of waiting for Janet to come out of her surgery, and when she does, everything is okay. But, it does seem like that Ivy and Janet are going to be close friends. Or possibly this could be another love interest for Ivy. We have no idea yet. But either way though, this is where we are going to end today's comic book video. So please leave me a like down below and subscribe. But guys, I'll see y'all next time. Later.